uh, good afternoon everybody um, today i am going to start the another module of uh, this advances in welding and joining technologies uh, that is micro joining and nano joining this is the module 5 so in this module uh, will i will try to uh, demonstrate different micro joining and nano joining technologies that have been developed recently and this micro joining and nano joining is significant specifically in today's industry because of the minimization of the product size specifically their geometric size their applic applicability and with the development of the different uh, devices like micro devices and nano devices so that type of devices the joining technology is very much significant micro joining and nano joining is nothing but the that reduced form of the conventional joining processes but we need to use the conventional technology and different perspective for specifically micro joining processes and nano joining processes although the nano joining processes is still uh, developing but to some extent the different micro joining technologies has been developed specifically the, the electronics industry and some other medical devices but nano joining technology is still a very new technology and it is maybe applicable uh, in case of nano electronics or maybe na different nano devices so uh, this module will try to focus on the different uh, aspects of the micro joining and nano joining technologies their basic mechanisms more or less it is almost same as conventional welding processes but there is a some difference exist from the conventional joining technologies so let us look into that all the different uh, micro joining and nano joining technologies exist in the current perspective that means in depending upon the current application so first i'll try to cover the fundamentals of the fusion micro welding processes although the basic features of the fusion welding is we have already known this phenomena but specifically this fusion micro uh, uh, micro welding in what aspect we can apply in case of uh, uh, micro scale processes second different micro electronics wire bonding we'll try to discuss because nowadays the electronics industry lot of joining processes are involved in the in this in this industry then bonding using nano particles we'll try to cover and then we'll be covering the laser micro welding processes which is uh, laser source or maybe laser welding it is known to us or we have the idea about the different laser welding technology but how this laser can be used in the micro scale application that we'll try to focus on this module next electron beam micro welding so although we know that electron beam normally we use when there is a need of high depth of penetration specifically high thickness material but this electron beam can also be applicable for the micro scale uh, welding processes but in this case we need to uh, use this source of the electron beam in different way we'll try to discuss this aspects next resistance micro welding and plastic micro welding we'll try to discuss that plastic micro welding specifically the micro welding application where we use the uh, non metals category then micro joining of the medical components and devices which is very significant part of this module because lot of application we found out in the uh, medical devices and medical components and then we'll try to focus on the advances in the laser micro welding processes and very specific uh, in very specific and at the same time what are the recent advancement happens in other micro welding processes since this course is related to the advances in welding and joining technologies and finally we'll discuss that development of different nano joining technologies although this field is very new but perhaps there exist or there is some development in that direction so we'll try to focus on this thing so looking into all these aspects first we'll focus on the uh, micro welding micro welding processes and then nano joining or different nano joining processes so if we see that in the picture 
right hand side here if you see that first picture that microplasma or welding process and second next two pictures we see that macrograph of laser welding process. Now, if we see that what are the difference in these two cases in microplasma arc welding process if we see the dimension of the fusion zone or size is different from the laser welding processes of course, all these cases the materials are same. So, all these cases is what we have done we have tried to join two different sheets of titanium alloy. So, grade 5 alloy. So, that titanium alloy is uh, formed in the form of BART welding uh, configuration and we use the different sources one case is we use the plasma source another case is we use the laser as a heat source, but we can find out there is a significant difference of the uh, shape and size of the fusion zone. So, this is possible because the concentrated of the heat in these two cases are different and that depends on the different welding technologies. First case it is microplasma arc creation of the arc cons specifically constricted arc as compared to the GTAW or gas tungsten arc welding process and second case we use the laser as a heat source, but this can be considered as a micro scale welding processes uh, because the sheet thickness in this case is uh, around 0.5 millimeter or we can say the 500 micrometer, but if you see the welding and joining of the metals and non metals in a smaller scale can be considered as a micro joining processes simply down scaling of the conventional welding processes, but it is uh, faces lot of challenges uh, with respect to the different aspects because only because of the minimization of the component. If you see that when try to reduce the thickness of a sheet which we suppose to join by any fusion welding or maybe other welding processes and then the specifically the distortion becomes a very much problem when you try to reduce the thickness. So, this is one aspect and at the same time the micro joining can also be possible to develop under the microscope because a manual handling of all these components is really difficult when there is a reduced thick signal. For example, if we try to handle maybe 100 micrometer or 0.1 millimeter sheet thickness it is very difficult to put or maybe less than that it is nearly impossible to put the manually and conduct uh, manually and at the same time to conduct some welding processes. So, in this case it is better option to put the development of the any micro welding or micro joining processes uh, under the uh, microscope, but even if we further reduce the size of the geometry of a sample then it is possible to that means up to the nano scale then it is possible to do also nano joining, but definitely the when you try to develop some nano joining technology the uh, handling of these samples probably not possible using the uh, a simple automatic system probably piezoelectric manipulator we can use to handle the samples uh, for nano welding processes. So, these are the typical uh, uh, may be we can say characteristics of the micro welding processes uh, that we can differentiate this process as compared to the conventional welding process. Now, if you see the another figure uh, right hand side the bottom figure if you see it shows that joining of the two carbon nanotubes. Here what we can do we can simply placing two different nanotube and if we very precisely apply the heat source at this joint probably it is possible to do the joining of these two nanotubes. So, this type of joining we can say that there is a happening of the nano joining, but it is a can imagine that how precisely it is necessary to control the nano joining process. Now, what is definition of the micro joining or nano joining processes if we see that 
before uh, that actually the joining means we understand the welding, bridging, soldering, bonding all together can be considered as a joining process and specifically welding maybe when we try to fuse the two material and in general if you reach the melting point temperature and uh, after melting when the solidification occurs uh, between the materials and it is come back to the uh, room temperature then that type of joining we can say that is called in specific that is called the welding in general we can say like this. Also there may be possible the mechanical joining for example, fastening, debating, crimping also that is also con comes under the uh, joining process. But in this case we will try to focus only on the welding, bridging, soldering and specifically solid state bonding processes uh, at different scale two different scale all these joining processes one is the macro scale another is the uh, nano scale. Now there is no strict definition of the micro joining mostly relative to the conventional uh, welding and joining processes, but only difference is the characteristic dimension may be we can differentiate in the from the conventional welding to the uh, nano, uh, nano joining or uh, micro joining processes. If the seat thickness or a diameter is smaller than a few hundred micrometer or maybe less than 100 micrometer maybe we can consider that as a micro joining process or micro welding process but the effective micro joining the most critical technical requisition is the manufacturing at even smaller scale maybe less than 100 micrometer as well but different variants of the different micro joining technology exist we will try to see what are the different micro joining technologies presently we are using or what are the uh, up to the current date what are the development of the different micro joining technologies we will try to see that. But in other aspect nano joining which is almost a uh, new aspect and mostly used in the R and D common R and D uh, laboratory, but uh, commercially we, till now we do not use the any micro joining technologies. But still it is evolving the uh, nano joining technologies and maybe we can use these nano joining technologies for any kind of nano devices or nano electronics. So, before looking into the different technology and techniques exist in the micro joining or nano joining, we will try to see what are the different mechanisms or principle uh, is responsible uh, in case of or what way we can explain the different nano joining. Uh, from the basic principle or from the mechanics. So, to so start with that basic mechanism of the micro joining process or nano joining process, maybe we can consider the two ideal surface, both are perfectly clean. That means, there is no oxide layer on the surfaces and they are atomically flat. Atomically flat means, if we see uh, the under the at the scale of the at the atomic scale the surface should appears completely flat. So, this is of course, this is a very ideal case, but in this ideal case if these two surfaces come into the together they spontaneously form or maybe spontaneously join between these two samples is possible by the inter atomic forces. But in this case what are the driving forces for joining these two samples or two materials if we bring them to in the very ideal situation. Maybe one is that the driving force in this case is the reduction of the Gibbs free energy of the system by simply reducing or replacing high energy free surfaces by low energy interfaces. So, if it is possible ideally if it is possible to do then fundamentally it is possible to joining these two samples. But in this case the actual case or in practical that always the metal surface may be having some contaminated or with mostly with oxides or some other materials. So, that is why if we want to remove that layer of the oxides or contaminated surface maybe we can use some heat or some mechanical energy either heat energy or mechanical energy or mechanical energy in the sense of pressure or uh, then it is possible to remove that 
oxides layer and after removing that oxides layers and these two surface if they come into the towards the ideal condition of the two surfaces may be uh, completely flat or there is a uh, there is no uh, <coughs> contaminated uh, layer exists on the surface then it is possible to join between these two surfaces. So, so that is why all of the welding technologies is involvement some source of energy is required probably that work on the surface may be to reduce the surface and it gives free energy so that it is possible to join between the two surfaces by application of the either heat either pressure or by some other uh, driving forces. So, based on this principle or physical states between the two parts to be joined in and in very specific to the micro joining processes we can divide the uh, four types of or four category uh, classification of this uh, micro joining processes first is the fusion welding solid state welding soldering or bridging and adhesive bonding probably all this type of uh, welding technologies we observe exist in case of the conventional welding processes but only this four type of uh, classic uh, four type of methodologies exist in case of micro joining process so micro joining process in general can be grouped according to the traditional welding processes uh, and that we can classify on this four type of welding processes but question is that can this classification is applicable for nano joining processes let us see if we look into this table that typical micro joining and nano joining processes here if we see that solid state bonding soldering bridging fusion welding and adhesive bonding and if we see that it is given that different types of micro joining technologies here wafer diffusion ultrasonic air bonding cold explosive friction stir and friction welding these are the typical welding technologies that is under the solid state bonding processes next if you see the soldering and bridging here diffusion uh, furnace induction laser reflow resistance wave vapor pressure fluxless soldering all these type of uh, welding processes is belongs to the micro joining processes but under the category of the soldering soldering or bridging next is the fusion welding if you see the electron laser that also use in case of conventional welding processes then plasma gas tungsten resistance and gla glass ceiling these are the typical uh, micro joining processes that we observe or maybe is of practical importance or practically we use all these type of uh, fusion welding processes next adhesive bonding the adhesive flip chip bonding mostly used uh, by this joining technology and it is under the category of the micro joining processes of course there is not much difference the uh, micro in the categorization of the micro joining process when we try to compare with the conventional welding processes but this similar type of classification can also be applicable in case of a uh, nano joining processes as well if we see the nano joining processes the solid state bonding there is the electron beam welding diffusion bonding ultrasonic welding and cold welding but if we know that normally electron beam welding comes under the categorization of the fusion welding processes but in case of nano joining we can put it under the solid state bonding because in this case probably when you to use the control source of the electron beam to produce the nano joining but that nano joining happens below the melting point temperature that is why it is under the categorization of the solid state bonding. Second thing is that liquid phase reflow soldering resistance soldering active brazing these are the typical laser brazing these are the typical processes normally we found under the categorization of the nano joining processes and this these are the typical soldering on bridging processes next laser beam welding uh, resistance welding these are the typical nano joining processes under the categorization of the fusion welding process and finally adhesive bonding can also be applicable in case of nano joining processes but probably of course the different nano joining technologies also developed and uh, still it is developing 
but there is a little bit difference as compared to the conventional welding processes or maybe in terms of the with respect to the uh, micro joining processes. So, that typical aspects we will be discussing uh, and the respective uh, point of time. Now, focus on the fundamentals of the fusion micro welding. What are the different techniques for the micro welding processes? Already we described the different types of micro welding processes. But what are the basic needs for the development of the technology for the micro welding processes? So, first thing is that we need to control the different variables very precisely, such as voltage, currents, and travel speed. That also applicable in case of conventional welding processes, but still it is very much important in case of micro welding processes. For example, we can use the laser as well in case of the micro link processes, but probably it is more useful if we you if we consider the pulse mode of the energy because as compared to the pulse mode of energy that energy is applicable to the for the micro joining applica uh, application in a very controlled way probably in a pulse we are putting if you look into this picture here if you see that during the pulse on time we generally apply the thermal load to the uh, sample or to the specimen and then remaining type of time that solidification happens again if we put basically it is a if we see the average power also the below as compared to the peak peak power from this figure. So, here we can say that that ramping of the power is possible in case of the pulse mode of laser welding process and that ramping of the power by ramping of the power probably we can use laser in specific to the micro welding process uh, <coughs> as uh, and which is very much similar to the conventional welding process as well. So, the different processes exist based depending upon the how we can apply the source of the uh, source of the heat applicable to join for the two similar or different material. So, what we understand that basic understanding from this uh, fundamentals of the fusion micro is that how precisely we can control the source of the heat and based on that it is possible to uh, generate or it is possible to develop develop different type of the uh, fusion micro welding processes. So, presently the this development in the in this fusion micro, micro welding processes uh, that are resistance welding, arc welding, arc means uh, TIG welding, tungsten inert gas welding, MIG welding, metal inert gas welding and plasma. These are the typical arc welding processes used for micro welding uh, applications and then laser. So, laser can also be used for micro welding uh, processes. Of course, an another is the electron beam welding can also be considered uh, for the application of the micro welding process, but the electron beam welding the prospect is different or maybe in different way we can use the electron beam or maybe very controlled way we can use the electron beam for micro welding application. So, fusion micro welding probably we can define further that fusion micro welding process when the sheet thickness of the materials is less than 0.5 millimeter or maybe the tubular materials diameter is less than 1 millimeter in diameter uh, that can be considered as a fusion micro welding process. So, geometric size may be is restricting the definition of the uh, micro welding process as compared to the conventional welding process. So, but the basic phenomena of the interaction of the formation of the fusion welding process probably first the application of the heat source that means thermal aspect. Then mechanical aspects means what efficiently it is possible to design the fixture and the holding devices to hold the sample or to move the sample and uh, that is the mechanical aspects uh, or finally, what type of residual stress and distortion level is achieved in case of. Uh, micro welding processes that can comes under the uh, mechanical aspects. And finally, the geometry aspect that means size, shape and size of the uh, samples which we are supposed to process in micro welding application. So, fusion micro welding these are the typical welding processes we used one is the laser mostly use, T welding process we use uh, 
Tigmin's tungsten's inert gas welding or GTAW gas tungsten's arc welding process can be used for the micro welding application. Then plasma, maybe plasma micro welding or you can say the micro plasma arc welding can also be used for the micro welding applications. Then electron beam and resistance. So, these five types of mic, uh, fusion welding process is applicable for the different micro welding, uh, micro welding processes. So, let us look into the typical application area of the micro joining processes. So, mostly micro electronics, medical, aerospace and the defense industries, there are a lot of applications of the uh, different micro joining technologies exist. Uh, definitely packaging and other interconnecting uh, in MEMS, micro electro mechanical system generally uh, this application of the micro joining we generally found out. Other application if we see the medical implants, uh, lamps and lighting assembly, jewelry industry, dent, uh, uh, dental applications, aerospace, uh, batteries, thermocouples, wires, TV parts, sensing devices, electronics, instrumentation uh, and also molds tool and, and many other uh, small component work we are supposed to join. In that cases, we will find out this typical application of the micro joining processes and following the different micro welding processes. It may be fusion micro welding processor or, or it may come from the other micro welding techniques. Uh, resistance micro welding we use most sometimes we, uh, we use the resistant micro welding processes, but in this case mostly the resistance micro welding process is used for joining of the non ferrous materials and uh, specific to in micro welding applications. And here if you see that sensor actuators and uh, medical devices uh, their typical area where we can use the resistance micro welding process or the diameter wire diameter maybe 20 to 400 micrometer in that range and the electrode force required in this case may be 1 to 700 Newton. So, there is a wide variation of the size of the wire diameter at the same time the variation of the force of the electrode is a it also varies very widely for specific in, ca in case of resistance micro welding process. Ultrasonic micro joining here also micro electronics wire bonding uh, basically used for the semiconductor chip level interconnections. Uh, using wire diameters typically less than 25 micrometer. So, less than 25 micrometer wire by using the wire bonding mechanism and we can we can uh, use um, uh, this type of this specifically ultrasonic uh, micro joining process uh, possible to use. Now, we look into that it is also used in the MEMS also that means, micro electro mechanical system or micro mechanics where the individual electrical, mechanical, fluidic and the optical components are need to be joined. So, all in these cases are need to be connected. So, here you can use the different uh, micro joining technologies and specifically if we see that in the in say in this application MEMS application there is a combination of the metallic and non metallic or different type of components. So, there are different types of micro joining technology exist that specifically use in case of the uh, uh, MEMS. Now, again if we come to the fusion micro welding processes here I see that arc welding is the important joining process even we know that from the several decades uh, the arc welding is a uh, uh, one of the most leading uh, welding technologies that generally we use the conventional welding processes, but this arc welding can also be applicable in case of the micro welding process, but in this case it is very much required to very regulated and control outputs of less than 1 ampere. Uh, that means, less than it is the arc uh, current the current of this in uh, to create the arc welding process the current can be controlled uh, in that level may be less than 1 ampere, then it is applicable in case of micro welding processes. So, mainly gas tanks arc welding and plasma welding is used for the different micro welding applications, uh, but in this case it this can also be used in continuous mode as well as the pulse mode of the uh, arc can also be um, possible to use in micro welding applications. Of course, power beam welding this is the another categorization of the fusion micro welding process here we can use laser or 
electron beam. So, very fine, but very fine control of the power and positioning is required in this case. And we know that laser or electron beam both it is possible to focus in a very small, small area. So, that is why it is a wide application observed in case of microlink process specifically for laser. And at the same time that deep penetration with low distortion type of welding can also be possible using both laser as well as the electron beam. But difference between the laser beam welding and the electron beam welding, thus we know that electron beam welding the all the melting or phenomena happens under the vacuum. So, there is no interaction of the outside atmosphere uh, during the welding process. So, in that way it is advantageous to get a very good oil joint, but laser beam welding also uh, occurs under the inert gas atmosphere. So, it will reduce the interaction of the uh, inert gas uh, interaction of the other atmospheric elements in the welded joint. So, here also you can produce a very good oil joint, but it is also having unique advantage as compared to the electron beam oiling processes. A laser oiling if we see the different uh, typical characteristics of the laser oiling processes if we see that laser light typically we generally use specifically for micro oiling applications the pulse duration is in the level of the millisecond of course, it is possible to generate the pulse even for ultra short uh, uh, al for ultra short laser oiling at the level of the femtosecond, picosecond. Uh, in that level and the nanosecond level pulse can also be generated microsecond and then millisecond generally, but conventional we use the micro oiling applications from the millisecond to up to the femtosecond level. The uh, basic advantage of the laser oiling processes is that it is a non contact mode and the heat is since heat is concentrated it is very small zone the size of the fusion zone and size of the heat affected zone is very small. So, it may not be so during the oiling process it may not affect the surrounding materials. So, that is why laser oiling is very uh, popular or very useful in a specific uh, in micro oiling process. And of course, the typically as compared to the laser oiling or electron beam oiling process the micro plasma arc oiling this is another variation of the micro joining or micro oiling process where this is relatively low cost as compared to the laser oiling process and but in the it is also applicable because nowadays it is a micro micro plasma arc oiling machines is available with low amperage capability that means even at the level of 1 ampere current it is possible to control using that machine. So, it is applicable in case of the micro oiling process. Uh, of course, apart from this other the stable and concentrated arc can also be possible even at low ampere current. So, that is the basic advantage so that micro plasma arc oiling process is developed for micro oiling applications and it is possible to in this case it is uh, the arc plasma uh, micro plasma arc oiling that gentle happens due to the gentle arc transfer with no frequency noise maybe uh, then high energy density uh, reduces that is the heat affected zone, but not as comparable as compared to the laser. Of course, short well time possible, but it is not comparable with respect to laser, only comparable with respect to laser in terms of the cost, not in terms of the quality, but till micro plasma arc welding is the secondary option uh, for the micro welding application. Now, apart from the fusion welding process, maybe there are several micro welding technologies exist in case of solid state bonding process. So, what are the typical characteristic for the solid state bonding process or maybe uh, what were the uh, uh, typical uh, things um, generally we, uh, we observe in case of solid state bonding process. First thing is that no melting at all, no melting of the material happens during the solid state bonding process and joints are made from the plastic flow of the material. So, maybe with or without the aid of the external steering of the uh, plastic flow of the material. So, uh, in case of solid state if in case of friction welding probably there is due to the heat is generated due to the friction, but in case of friction state welding heat is generated as well as the friction uh, due to the friction, but joining is happened mostly by the steering action of the 
by the tool in case of friction stress welding that we have already know the basic mechanism of the friction stress welding but that same mechanism is applicable here also in case of micro welding processes other type of micro joining processes are ultrasonic vibration friction welding and diffusion bonding these are the three types of non solid state bonding generally we observe in case of micro welding applications now we'll start with the friction welding so principle is known to us that heat is generated by the friction and and that and that generated heat after the generation of the heat small uh, if we apply the small pressure uh, then the material can be joined or if we apply the some steering steering action of the uh, plasticized material then the material can be joined with respect to each other then that type of joining process is called the friction stress joining process or friction stress welding process but this type of solid state bonding is probably applicable in the wide range of materials even for metals as well as the non metals but friction welding is mainly applicable when the geometric shape is symmetric in nature that is the only limitation of this type of welding processes and one of the typical application for the friction welding is that components to the heat sinks in the electronics industry for example the aluminum heat sinks to the aluminum substrates normally is joined using the uh, uh, friction welding process now with the same principle of the friction stress welding process now it is the micro friction stress welding process has also been developed it's a simply downscaling of the friction stress welding process and we de we define the micro friction stress welding process in terms of the thickness which is less than 1000 micrometer uh, or maybe at the similar dimension typical application thin wall structure electrical electronics uh, micro mechanical assembly but it is you know that it is always advantageous as compared to the fusion welding process and specifically the solid state friction stress welding process is applicable for joining of the dissimilar materials but in this case the cnc programmable micro milling machines can also be used to develop a friction stress welding machines like conventional friction stress welding process normally uh, we it is possible to convert one milling machine uh, by using the principle of the uh, rotating axis but similar kind of principle we can follow but in this case cnc control micro milling machines is possible to convert to the micro uh, micro scale friction stress welding process but challenges is that always there is a exist hole left out at the oil maybe to remove that uh, difficulties in case of micro friction stress welding process maybe some strategies can also be uh, considered but another difficulties or challenges maybe we can say that it's a scale sensitive and careful selection of the tool design and fixer is really necessary for a successful friction stress welded joint what are the typical applications of friction stress welding process if you see that mostly we use the aluminum alloy brass pure copper aluminum to copper and poly propylene and polyethylene these are the typical materials where we can use the friction stress welding process uh, till date these are the materials uh, applied for the micro friction stress welding processes but if you see the typical parameters used for the friction stress welding process first is that welding speed around 50 to 500 mm per minute rotational speed at the maximum 3000 rpm and oil joints can also be formed in the bar lap and the spot formats but till the micro friction stress welding is developing stage but and specifically for the other types of material and so many dissimilar combination of material still going on now i come to that point solid state bonding process so solid state bonding process one of the typical uh, solid state solid state bonding process is the ultrasonic bonding in this case that uh, to join the different materials the ultrasonic vibration is responsible first start to 
remove the uh, oxide layer from the surface and then application of the pressure probably form the bond between the two materials. But the high frequency vibration is the main driving force as well as the low pressure that cause the plastic flow of the material and the interlinking of the two different types of materials. But this process is subject to there, there is a small increment of the temperature, small temperature rise may happen during this process. This type of materials, so this type of process is mainly used for the plastics specifically joining of dissimilar materials and most significant application we found out for ultrasonic bonding in the electronics industry. And this, may, this process is preferable specifically the thermal sensitive materials or metal is having tend to formation of the crack. So, in that case this, this ultrasonic bonding or may be applicable. Another solid state bonding process is the diffusion bonding. So, diffusion bonding means that the atoms of the two solids when come into the two when come into into the contact there is a diffusion between them, but that is a function of over the time temperature and pressure. So, these are the so this time temperature and pressure is responsible for the diffusion bonding between the two metals. For example, that sometimes may be heat may or may not be required, but if there is a requirement of the heat probably is the point 50 percent to 70 percent of the melting point temperature and high pressure is required, but that should be kept on for a long period of time to make the atomic diffusion between the two metals. But the main concern of the diffusion bonding is the uh, cleanliness of the surface because before joining the two metals, uh, it is necessary to clean the surface uh, between the in the surface of the substrate materials. And when after cleaning, when they come into the contact, then the high pressure over the time makes them for diffus diffusion of the atoms and then finally, it forms the uh, bonding between these two metals. But advantage or maybe uh, positive part of this joining is that this is this type of joining cause very minimum distortion to the components as compared to the other fusion welding processes. But thing is that this in this type of bonding the surface must be machined as smooth as possible, so that the time requirement for the diffusion of the atoms may be in this case will be less. Now, this diffusion bonding is specifically a widely used in joining of the high strength and, and specific to the ceramic materials and joining of the alternating layer of the foils uh, of the thin metal foil which generally it is possible to join by diffusion bonding this mechanism. Typical materials if we see that include titanium, beryllium and the zirconium in electronics, aerospace and the nuclear industry, uh, this process is applicable. Now, I will show li little bit about the mathematical aspects of the diffusion bonding. Generally, when to try to analyze these things that according to the fixed law of diffusion, J equal to minus D into DC by DX. So, J is actually diffu diffusion flux, D is the distribution, coefi distribution coefficient and dc by dx is the concentration gradient. So, maybe here the diffusion diffusion flux we can estimate j. This equation can also be considered as compared to the Fourier's law of heat conduction. We generally use Fourier law of the heat conduction that heat flux q equal to minus k into dt by dx. Now, here q is the q is the heat flux, k is the thermal conductivity and dt by dx is the temperature gradient. Like this equation decides that the within the application of the flux what may be the temperature gradient development within the body itself and that is uh, controlled by the, the properties that is called the thermal conductivity in this case. But similar equivalent equation 
probably we can apply from the fiction law of the diffusion uh, a similar type, but uh, here also if you see the time dependent diffusional flux can also be estimated by the amount of the atoms being diffused over the time t. So, that is j equal to m by a into t, a is the area of the contact between the two surfaces t is the time and m is the that amount. So, from these two equations we can find out that time requirement for the diffusion bonding of the two samples can also be estimated that minus 1 by d m by a and 1 by d c by d x. So, basically the time requirement is inversely proportional to the uh, diffusion coefficient and, and the concentration gradient. So, if diffusion coefficient is very high probably the time requirement will be the less and at the same time if concentration gradient is very high then time requirement for the bonding will also be less. So, that time time requirement it depends on these two parameters, but actually the diffusion coefficients may not be the constant it also depends on the or temperature or maybe it is a function of the temperature. So, d can also be ex, uh, <coughs> expressed like that d 0 into e to the power q d by r t. So, q d is basically the activation energy for diffusion r is the universal gas constant t is the temperature of the process and d 0 is the, uh, the some constant uh, that is independent of the uh, temperature and also of course, it depends on the material being joined. So, from this expression we can estimate the diffusion coefficients if the other parameters are known to us or maybe time requirement for the diffusion bonding. Now, we come to that point soldering and bridging this is the another typical micro joining processes may be conventional joining processes, but that process is applicable for the micro joining uh, cases. So, here soldering bridging we know that when you use the another material uh, that either second or third material for second material for the similar joining processes and third material for the dissimilar joining processes. So, that low, low melting point material is used that will try to join the two metals and in the terms of in, in the way that into the it flows into the gap between the components by the capillary action, but without melting of the parent components. So, that is the uh, basic uh, mechanism for the soldering or the bridging process, but the difference between the so soldering and bridging process in terms of the uh, second or third material which material we are using or that which what is the melting point of that material. So, bridging is generally considered the this joining occurs below 450 degree centigrade and uh, sorry soldering is considered that uh, joining process occurs below 450 degree centigrade on and bridging is considered the above 450 degree centigrade. So, uh, based on this temperature we can differentiate the soldering and soldering and the bridging processes. So, we can see the lot of application of the solder uh, lot of application of soldering process in electronics industry, but the joint strength actually vary depending upon the contact between these two parent metals and that third metal or second metal actually try to weight the parent metals uh, in terms of the molten solder or molten uh, bridge metal. But any contamination may cause the reduction in the weighting action and consequently, consequently the joining strength. Also the gap between the parent metals that also influence the amount of the joint strength when you try to join using the soldering or bridging mechanism. So, both similar type of materials or dissimilar type of materials can also be joined using this technique, but soldering primarily we can find out the application joining process for the electronics industry and electrical industry also and that actually use the printed circuit boards or to make the connectivity of the uh, within the printed circuit boards. But one of the major concern of the traditional solders is that it is most of the cases it contains one of the component is uh, lead. 
that have been used in various applications and we know that say this lead this component is uh, a health hazard component and it cre uh, so we try to nowadays uh, we try to find out some alternate arrangement of of the uh, solders we'll see what are the alternate arrangements can also be done uh, using the uh, different solder materials so another joining technique that is called the adhesive bonding so adhesive bonding is basically uh, which depends on the attractive forces between the molecules and at the surface and adhesive the adhesives and the those are the surface to be joined however the larger the molecules the better will be the addi uh, addition which is in that that's why the organic adhesives are mostly preferred for the adhesive bonding of the two materials but we can find out that liquid adhesive also used to add the surfaces to be bonded and when after using this liquid adhesives maybe uh, we can see that it needs to cure and after that it becomes harder and then it forms the solid bond but sometimes the curing can also be added or accelerated by the application of the temperature uh, normally certain cases we can use that 150 degree centigrade if you see that pictures that in between there is a adhesives and the loads two different samples and between these two samples the adhesive can be placed and then it forms the joining of these two metals like bridging and soldering the thickness of the adhesive is also important because that as minimum as is the thickness of the adhesive the joint will be the joint strength will be more but if we increase the thickness of the adhesive the joint strength can be decreased recent developments happens in this adhesive bonding using the using the adhesives having the metals typically silver so which is possible to make the electrically or thermally conductive so development of the thermally conductive adhesives has greater heat dissipation rate in electronic devices so that's why this uh, conductive adhesives can be a replacement of the solders and nowadays this kind of adhesive is uh, typically used for the several other micro joining applications now we come to that point micro electronics wire bonding it's a joining between an integrated circuit or maybe other semiconductor devices but in this case wire bonding is the most cost effective and flexible interconnect technology and if you see that the wire bonding can also be used even high frequency application of the order of the gigahertz but what are the principle of the wire bonding technology the principle follows the ultrasonic welding process but bond head that means it oscillates at the ultrasonic frequency and scrubbing the two materials together and then forming a weld so the bonders are capable of uh, making a bond almost every half second so that means process is very fast only half seconds it is possible to make a bonding but what are the mechan process what are the mechanism of this process so in this case the uh, wire bonding the brings together the two materials we need to connect by through the wire bonding and to be bonded using either heat pressure and ultrasonic energy either combination of these things or without any heat only pressure and ultrasonic energy can also be applicable for the bonding when we use the ultrasonic energy as well as the temperature then that is called thermosonic bonding typical materials we found for the bonding uh, in microelectronics industry that are aluminum copper silver and gold mostly the size of the uh, wire is around 15 micrometer to 100 micrometer but recent tendencies happens that the choice of the wire is changes from gold to copper we know that gold is thermal very good having good thermal conductivity but or uh, electrical conductivity but 
the cost is very high. So, nowadays the gold is replaced by the copper, but if you see that what are the typical characteristics or maybe advantage or disadvantage using the copper, first is that copper is harder than gold and aluminum, this is the positive point, but th there is a formation of the oxides which is inherent with this material. So, to protect this joining process uh, to, to bonded join, special packaging is required in order to protect the copper wire. But palladium coated copper wire can also be used and may be commonly used as an alternate which has been so which has been observed that significant resistance to the corrosion. So, that is why now, it, now copper can be a replacement of the gold of course, with some uh, negative sides, but till it is comparable to that. Now, two mainly, mainly two types of wire bonding we generally observe one is the ball bonding, another is the wedge bonding. So, in this case, two different types of tools can be used. In case of wedge bonding, using a wedge shape bonding tool, maybe like a sharp edge, and another is the uh, we use for specifically ball bonding, the capillary is used for the ball bonding, but that is made of mostly from ceramics. If you see in this figure, the typical uh, characteristic of the wedge bonding and the ball bonding. Uh, normally, the wedge bonding is performed using the aluminum wire, and the wedge bonded at one point using the ultrasonic energy. Definitely, the bonding, the wire bonding, the source is the ultrasound. ultrasound the high vib uh, vibration of from the ultrasound. Uh, so, that means, ultrasonic energy can be used for the wedge bonding, but in this case wedge bonding it does not involve any temperature as an added thing. So, this happens because this happens at the room temperature and the drawing of the wire when you do some wedge bonding and it becomes the directional properties that means, uh, in specific direction that joint strength can be a good or maybe if you want to draw the wire it should be in specific direction not in any direction. So, if you and ball bonding on the other way is a characterized by the thermosonic process maybe because apart from the ultrasonic energy some heat is required to get the ball bonded ball bonded sample. Now, in this case mostly use ball bonding with the gold wire and here in this case a small ball is formed at the end of the wire and once the ball is bonded at the first joint then the wire is drawn out by forming an arc and before attaching this as a weight bond to the other part of the sample. So, that is why the ball bonding is joined in such a way that it can be drawn in any direction, which is having the limitation in case of the wedge bonding, because wedge bonding cannot move the draw the sample uh, draw the wire in any direction. So, that is the difference. Now, if you look into this figure, if you see the wedge bonding it is a kind of one wire is joined on the sample uh, flat and then other thing if you see that ball bonding also, here if you see that there is a there is a formation of the ball at the end of this joint. So, these two types of process we use for the microelectronics industry. Now, question is that preference of the ball bond or wedge bond that means, at which cases we can prefer wedge bonding and which cases we can prefer the ball bonding. Now, if we look into the typical characteristic of this processes that ball size is approximately 2 to 3 times of the wire diameter. But in case of high strain wedge bond, it is possible to only uh, 2 to 3 meter, 3 micrometer probably wider with respect to the wire diameter. So, uh, in that case, and another uh, difference between this ball and uh, wedge, wedge bonding is that one case is a directional, another case is the non directional. So, based on that, the preference of the ball bonding or wedge bonding is maybe in other aspects that we can look into the electrical characteristics of the package. That means, 
if if you try to apply these processes whether the surrounding items will be affected or not in case of ball bonding since apart from the bond uh, uh, ultrasonic energy it involves some temperature some temperature that means we need to application some temperature in case of ball bonding so that that may affect the surrounding material so depending on that whether there is no heat application is required or the heat application is may, may be affected by the surrounding material we can choose whether we need to go for ball bonding or whether we, we should go for wedge bonding so apart now we we'll look into the another joining technology that is called bonding using nano particles so this is another solid state bonding solid state bonding process so because nano particles having the typical characteristics and if you see here we normally use the 1 to 100 in the uh, nanometer in that size nano particles but if you look into the mechanism of the uh, nano particles which is literally different as compared to the uh, other conventional size of the particles maybe if you see the surface energy of a substance is related to the strength of the force between the particles so definitely the surface energy is very significant part uh, when we try to relate to the strength of the uh, forces between the particles for example diamond and iron with much stronger forces between their particles and of course because they are having higher surface energy but the properties of the small particles such as nano particles differ from the larger particle size because in the nano particles the uh, there exist the high surface area to volume ratio and that is responsible to bring some different characteristics as compared to the larger or conventional size of the particles with a larger surface area but at the same time the friction may be bigger having bigger impact but a surface that appears smooth is actually uh, may not be at rough May, may not be may be rough or may not be at smooth in the atomic level so size of the particles uh, when size of the particles may be come into the contact in that case the contact area and stresses between them increases significantly so that mechanism can also be explained in terms of that what is the roughness of the surface at the different scale maybe at the nano scale what is the surface roughness which may be different from the at normal uh, micro scale or macroscopic scale and second point is that the since nanoparticles having the higher surface area so that also it's a surface areas that also impact on the surface energy so it is having some other impact for the joining of the two metals as compared to the conventional particles if you see that most of the nanoparticles may be having the properties the intermediate between those of the metals and non metals but nano particles having different optical properties and the more sensitive to the heat than large particles a large surface energy of the nano particles affects the surface atoms of the bulk metals so a metal to metal bonding using nano particles can be considered as a filler material so it may be possible to achieve significantly a uh, good bonding between using the nano particles even at the low temperature that we observe in the fusion welding or diffusion bonding processes here see the nano particles we generally use the composite silver consist of the uh, silver metallo organic nano particles and ag2 co3 particles and using these particles it is possible to joining in the various materials like gold silver copper nickel titanium and aluminum but in this case with that it is possible to layer of put the layer of the nano particles between the two samples and we apply some pressure and if needed uh, we, we, uh, it is uh, possible to apply some amount of the temperature also and keep it holding for certain time then these two samples can also be joined using the uh, making the bonding using the nano particles now what are the basic mechanisms is basically when we try to use the 
uh, nanoparticles. So, first in general we can say that decom it is necessary to, when you try to join the two surfaces it is necessary to remove the oxide films and when it is possible to remove the oxide films and then active metallurgical bonding is possible between the two samples and here using the nanoparticles we will try to do that things. Now, here if you see that based on the shear strength of the joints the order of bondability of the each materials is given here also. If you see the silver, copper, nickel, titanium and alloy. So, basically silver, copper, nickel probably having the good bondability as compared to the titanium and aluminum. So, this forms that or, or maybe this sequence actually follows the identical to the order of the free energy value of the oxide formation. So, if it is possible to form or uh, in the reduction in some reduction equations, if we remove the oxide layer more easily probably in that case using the nanoparticles we can obtain the very good joint as compared to the uh, other uh, other welding processes. So, here in the reduction equations mainly it forms the CO or CO2. Uh, so, in this case joint strength for the copper, silver and uh, uh, gold are relatively good because the oxides are less stable and can be reduced by the organic reaction. So, this is the one possible way and another case if we see the aluminum and titanium this the joint strength is relatively less because in this case the oxides and the more, more stable. So, it is not easy to form the CO and CO2 and remove the oxide slurs more easily. That is why in this case bondability is not good using the nano particles. So, we have discussed that uh, different types of uh, solid state bonding processes and fusion micro welding processes uh, in this session and uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind attention.